under its new coalition agreement, Germany's government is deciding to keep nuclear power out of the nation's energy mix as it expands its renewable energy infrastructure. Now, in the meantime, other countries, even the UK, which has also been phasing out nuclear uh, power, rather, are abuzz with plans for a new technology called small modular reactors. France 24's tech editor Peter O'Brien is here to tell us more. Wow, Peter, hello. Yeah. I mean, tell hello, us, Matt. what what indeed is small modular reactors? Right, well, there's a buzz for them, and I sort of noticed all this buzz around nuclear power even in COP26, which was rather unusual for a climate change summit because nuclear power kept coming up, and it sort of shows that this debate over whether we can use it to push out fossil fuels has really been reignited. So, as you say, these small modular reactors, well, France has actually decided, well, last month, to invest 1 billion euros in their development, a very different tack to what Germany is doing right now. Over in the UK, a consortium led by Rolls-Royce has just received 250 million euros from the government to develop these SMRs as well. They're joining a race with the likes of the US, Russia and China, which are also pushing to phase uh, sort of scale up these uh, small modular, modular reactors. In September, China's first one kicked into action and started operating. So what advantages do they have over traditional nuclear plants? Well, the main worry with nuclear now, traditional nuclear, is that it's sort of too little, too late, even though the United Nations said this week that it was the lowest energy carbon source. The problem is that power plants are really too expensive and, 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 and take too long to roll out. Perhaps they're actually too slow to really address the urgency of, um, of uh, global warming. So these small modular reactors then produce less energy, but of course, being much smaller, they're faster to manufacture. All manner of design has been proposed for them with all sorts of different nuclear processes inside. But the key feature is that they can be made in a factory and then sent out and assembled on site. The theory is that this would allow them to achieve economies of scale and essentially mass producing these reactors with a standardized design. As they're smaller, that means that on site they require less staff and would be easier to upgrade and could be deployed in much more locations locations as well. Now, when you mention nuclear energy, and especially the idea of mini nuclear reactors yeah. you know, produced on a mass scale, that is probably going to worry a few people. Like Absolutely. It, it does sound a bit worrying. And of course, we've got these three concerns when it comes to nuclear that always come back. The first is, will there be an accident? The second is, what are we going to do with all the waste? And the third is, well, nuclear proliferation. We've got more stuff out there that can be used to turn into nuclear weapons. Well, firstly, Oxford University research shows that nu nuclear is actually already among some of the safest energy sources in the world per unit of energy. That's including disasters like Chernobyl and Fukushima. And next generations like these SMRs actually rely on more passive systems. So things like low power and low operating pressure. That make makes it much less likely for there to be severe damage to the reactor core and much less likely for there to be a big burst out of radioactivity in the event of an accident. Now, in terms of waste, some next generation designs use what are called fast reactors. These burn up more of their fuel. There's an, also another type of reactor called a breeder reactor, which actually creates new fuel as it runs rather than wasting a lot of it. Now, of course, nuclear proliferation, as I said, remains a big concern. Many next gen reactors are designed to use low enriched non-weapons grade uranium, or in fact, an element called thorium. Now, China is about to test what will be the first large scale operation thorium reactor since 1969. For some people, this element is a kind of wonder fuel. It's far more abundant and far more efficient than uranium. It's potentially safer and produces far less, we less waste. It was once believed as well to be far more difficult to weaponize, but some research researchers are now disputing this. So 2021 could turn out to be a productive year for nuclear energy, but I understand NASA has bigger plans. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, of course, NASA is looking towards the sky and thinking, what can we do with all this, these new ideas surrounding nuclear that are coming out? You've probably heard of the Artemis program. They're planning to send humans back to the moon by 2025. That's in order to establish if it's possible to create a longer term hol a human 
colony on the moon. And to do this, they'll need, they'll need power, right? And a sort of traditional method for power in space is solar. Problem is, on the moon, just one night can last as long as 14 days on Earth. That makes solar power very intermittent and not reliable enough. So last week, NASA sent out a call for American companies to come up with concepts for a nuclear fission system that they could bring up with them onto the moon. The main challenge, of course, is cooling. It's not clear what cooling method they'd use. Water obviously can't be found easily on the moon. So nuclear reactors running at 2,500 degrees Celsius, well, they need to be cooled down some way. And NASA says if they can figure out how to do it, well, they won't just take them to the moon, they'll take them to Mars afterwards as well. Yeah, I imagine though safety and transportation might also be an issue as well. But Absolutely. Peter, this is fascinating. Thank you so much. Thanks.